The U.S. military might have contacted an alien race and formed an agreement that essentially negotiated the freedom to kidnap and experiment with human beings in exchange for advanced technology. The history and facts of this agreement are detailed. Even more surprising is the fact that this advanced technology, able to transform our civilization and the elimination of most of our social and political problems, has been kept secret and used by the military-industrial complex of militarization. It presents a very negative picture of both the extraterrestrials and the global government. The United States would have been perplexed when they discovered that the abductees far exceeded the agreement they had maintained at the time. At the end of 1947 an alien disc was recovered in Roswell, New Mexico, along with several dead occupants and a living humanoid. The humanoid was given the name of Ebe, extraterrestrial biological entity, and survived until 1952. During his captivity, Ebe got sick of an unknown disease. In a vain attempt to save Ebe, and to win the favor of this technologically superior alien race, the United States began issuing a call for help early in 1952 in the vast regions of space. The call was answered but the project continued as a good faith effort. Aware of encounters with extraterrestrials, President Truman created the NSA National Security Agency in 1952 with the goal of deciphering the extraterrestrial language and communicating with them. In 1954 the race of aliens described as grey hairless skin and big noses, from the region of Orion in space landed at the Holloman Air Base. It is the same race that crashed in Roswell seven years earlier. They claimed that their planet was dying and needed something secure on Earth to carry out genetic experiments that would allow their race to survive. It was speculated that they reproduced by cloning and this technique lacked genetic variety and had weakened them for a long time. The space had to be provided to them in exchange for certain advanced technology that the aliens agreed to share with us. Ironically, the government also had contact with another race of aliens in 1953. This race has supposedly been more human in appearance and closely resembles the extraterrestrials that Betty and Barney Hill found. This alien group warned us against the extraterrestrial greys that were in orbit around the equator at the time and offered to help us with our spiritual development. They demanded that we dismantle and destroy nuclear weapons as an important condition. They refused to exchange technology, citing that we were spiritually unable to handle the technology we then possessed. They believed that we would use any new technology to destroy each other. This race said that we were on a path of self-destruction and we had to stop killing each other, stop polluting the earth, stop violating earth's natural resources, and learn to live in harmony. Although this sounds perfect now, post-World War II and entering the Cold War, these terms were met with extreme suspicion, especially the main condition of nuclear disarmament. The army believes that the fulfillment of these conditions would leave America helpless in the face of an alien threat. Nuclear disarmament was not considered to be in the interest of the United States and the proposal was rejected. President Eisenhower finally met with the Greys who landed a second time at Edwards Air Base. A formal treaty with them was signed in 1954. In exchange for the transfer of advanced technology, the aliens were given permission to kidnap humans in a limited way for medical examination. This had something vital to do with his own genetic experiments. Since his knowledge of biology seemed to advance beyond our understanding, this was never adequately explained. The condition was that humans would never be harmed, they would return safely to their place of abduction, and that human beings would not have traumatic memories of the event. In addition, the extraterrestrials would provide a detailed list of all the abductees to a special group called MJ-12, which would monitor their compliance. Ask for some room to carry out their work. It was agreed the alien bases would be built underground, below the indigenous reserves in the Four Corner area of Utah, New Mexico, Arizona, and Colorado. Another base was to be built in Nevada, in the area known as S. 4, about 7 kilometers south of the area of 51, known as Dreamland. Although the National Security Council had an agreement with the Greys, that would give a periodic list of those kidnapped in the MJ-12, in a short time it became evident in the Eisenhower government that these Greys had broken this agreement and kidnapped many more people than they reported, including a large number of children. 
Horrified by the betrayal of the Greys, the government also suppressed any public knowledge of the extraterrestrials, the realization of their own guilt for their betrayal of humanity. An evaluation was made and it was determined that the US did not have the resources to fight against them and so it was decided that the military should continue with the agreement, even though it had already been violated, and focus on exploiting the relationship with the aliens to advance in technology. Of course, any new technology acquired would also have to be kept secret to avoid that the public would not have to know that it was bought with the sale of their freedom and security. Rarely, genetic experiments that would have taken place in men, women, and children were emerging on the hybrid program of extraterrestrials. All this had to be hidden from the public at any price. A secret fund of billions of dollars of taxes was organized and maintained by the military office of the White House in 1957 by order of President Eisenhower, supposedly to build secret underground bunkers for the President and Congress in case of military attacks. Later, when much more money is needed, the credits were financed by black projects that figure in the defense budget, which are not subject to any revision.